In this topic, you will learn how to perform a stock change to change the location moving products from their current location to a new location. The stock change function is used to change locations for a single stock line, change stock line statuses, units of measure, or even move all stock lines to a new location. For example, you unpack a box of 12 bottles of wine. The current unit of measure is box. You move 8 bottles to a storage location with the status of A. The new unit of measure is unit or each. You move four broken bottles to another location ready to be discarded with the status of R. Also, with the stock change function, the global quantity as well as the stock value before and after is always the same. Now, to be able to make stock changes like change locations, statuses, and units of measure, it's important to define the setting of the associated entry transaction. So, if you want to change locations, statuses, as well as units of measure, make sure you check location, status, and unit change boxes. And finally, you cannot modify a stock change record after creation. If you want to modify a previous movement, it's necessary to create a new stock change in the opposite direction. So let's take a look at how to change stock lines. You manufacture computers and you receive some graphic adapters into the quality control location within the system. However, you place the adapters in the storage location that you're going to use for manufacturing. Now you need to make the move within the system. You use the stock changes function to make that move. To do that, you go to stock, the stock module, and then to the internal transactions block and then the stock changes function. As you can see here, there are many entry transactions that you can use. In setup, you can design many different type of entry transactions based on the stock move that you would like to make, as you can see here. There's status change, stock change, etc. However, we're going to select all stock change entry transactions to show as many fields as possible. Now to create that record or the transaction you hit new and then you enter the location or the storage site location. The entry field is for the document number that's generated on creation. The field here is a description field that you can enter additional description information. The date, the allocation date. If it's associated with a project you can select the project ID. Transaction group basically allows you to select the transaction group for reporting or inquiry purposes, and then you select your product. If this site was warehouse managed, the site or warehouse field would be available. Now you can enter the location of the product here. In addition to the in the destination section, the status that you would like for the product, the location that you would like for the product, include all or exclude all of the product. There's other options also available for you to select the product. In the right panel you can do the selection criteria to select the product. On the left list you can use stocks selections to be able to select the product. We'll use stocks selection. As you can see stock selection shows you the product that's available and it shows you the location of those products. As you can see, the quality control location has 170 available. The stores location where you want to send that product has 50. Now you received 100 into the storage or the quality control location that you would like to move, so that's what we want to select. As you can see, it populates the field. Now once again, I could use the destination section or the stock picking section, or the selection criteria to make my move. But in this case, I'm going to use what's a pop-up window to make the changes. That's another option that you have. To get there, I can just tab through. Now I can make changes here as far as the quantity, the destination packing unit, 
also the warehouse, if it was warehouse managed, the status, also the location type and location. But tabbing through allows a pop-up window for me to enter those changes. The first thing I could enter is a movement description, but we'll forego that. And I can enter down in the line here, the details, instead of entering in the line there. So I'll enter 100 that we're moving. It's not warehouse manage. We're not going to change the status. We'll leave it as status A. And then we enter the storage location that we want to transfer it to. As you can see, it's STO 907 where we're moving it, where we are going to move the product. You have some user-defined fields that I can enter additional descriptions here as well. Now, sometimes you want to have labels created for the product because it's going to be in a different location, and this is where you would select the label format. Now that we've completed everything, we save this, this change, and then you create. Once you create, the document number is generated. Now, even from this screen, you can actually see the changes that have been made to the system. To do that, you can select the action icon here and select the stock by site and be able to see the changes of the stock that's available at the new location. It went from 170, the total is um, 230. To drill down, to go further, to see all the details, you select criteria. I'm going to select the detailed by status, and as you can see, the changes here. And then select the accent icon, and I want to see the stock transactions inquiry. And this is also available at the stock module inquiry block as well. So here, I can see the changes that were made. and the stock changes that have taken effect. I can also drill down and take select criteria to say I want to see internal moves as well. Once selected, as you can see, it actually changes even further and shows me even more drill down detail. You can see 100 was taken out and 100 was added from the quality control location to the storage location. And one last point, you cannot modify a stock change transaction. In order to make a modification, you would have to enter in another stock change transaction.